What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist as we continue our live coverage of EMO 2025 here at DMG Mori World. We're gonna get into some pretty crazy stuff now and I'm joined by Olaf, who's gonna help us out with additive manufacturing. Tell us a little bit about this machine here because I feel like people may not be familiar with the SLM process. Okay, let's uh, start with some fundamental basics. Um, this is the latest machine that we present here at EMO. It's the LaserTech 30 SLM third generation, focusing on precision, so high accuracy of the laser positioning below, we're giving some numbers below uh, positioning 30 micrometer. And um, here you can see the process now. Actually, it's a fundamentally simple process. So we have a layer-wise layer build-up. In this case, it's an aluminum and uh, we, we apply 30 micrometer layers um, and selectively melt the areas that belong to, to the part. Yeah, and this we do layer by layer by layer by layer. So it's putting on a layer, melting it with the lasers, putting on a layer, build, 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 build. Exactly. With, in this generation, highest precision, we have real uh, two manufacturing expertise placed in this machine. So a casting frame, uh, de thermal decoupling, so several features which actually the advanced users take, take a specific look for. But uh, this is the, the major key of this, this machine. And when it comes to actually using this kind of powder bed style, what kind of metals can you do with this? What kind of materials? Yeah, so starting here in aluminum, it's a very, very broad metal actually, but we have more specialities in titanium, uh, materials that are not easy to machine, nickel-based alloys, ah. yeah. So in that case, uh, many of our customers do near-shape uh, printing. So in order to, to, to minimize uh, machining. And so what does the process look like? Because is this aiming to replace subtractive manufacturing? Like what's the kind of thought process that goes into this chain of manufacturing? That's a very good question, Ian. Um, let me tell you a story. Uh, Eight years ago, I started at DMG Mori. Even for DMG Mori, this technology was brand new. We went uh, with the machine to a, to a conference. And well, as you know, conferences are full of PhDs, professors and so on. And they came with me, they were very interested. Oh, a machine tool manufacturer is now uh, providing this new technology. And they asked me, will this technology in the future replace traditional machining methods? And those times I said, no, it will not, but I told this because I was a bit afraid that people will be disappointed that maybe they, they will lose their jobs or whatever. Yeah? Now, eight years later, I can clearly say that uh, we are just an additional feature in the entire process chain. So we have uh, potentials without considering tool passes or accessibility, tool accessibility, we can create uh, tiny little structures, uh, thin wall thicknesses, heat exchangers, topology optimized parts. So we have a huge design freedom, mm -hmm. but I assume you have been doing welding manually before, right? So, and everybody that does welding knows that uh, a welding process creates stresses, deformations, and and these stresses we do also place in, in our parts. Because, because it's essentially the same process, just very exactly. specialized. Exactly. So, I mean, we are heating up a material to, to melt temperature, then it cools down to maybe 300 degrees centigrade, and this creates uh, yeah the, the residual stress inside, and, and therefore I can clearly say, uh, just considering these stresses, even though having a very precise machine, we, we will not uh, overcome post-processes afterwards. So this is really, like you're saying, it's a very useful tool in the toolbox as part of the process chain, but it's not probably going to, you're still gonna need a mill somewhere, you're still gonna Absolutely. need a lathe. This is a piece of the chain. And I'm honest with you, if, I mean, our typical customers that have interest, that show interest in that machine, they typically give us uh, cut files that are traditionally manufactured, subtractively. And I receive those files and in 95% of that cases, I have to not reject it, but I have to politely tell them that in the overall cost will be too high. Right. Yeah. 
So you need a specific application where you where you make use of the advantages, right. and we can take a we can have a look for some advantages yeah, that we can definitely. Place. I mean, I'm not going to be making brackets for my chairs on this machine. Absolutely. This is for medical. This is for like some of the things we're seeing of here. Of course. So what do we have here? So um, giving some uh, some applications here. This, for example, is a heat exchanger. Look at that. Yeah. It's a gyroid structure that we fill the, the heat exchanger in. Um, obviously, this is a structure that you cannot produce traditionally. I mean, I could try, but I don't think that would work. Would you it? Can, I know you will give your best, <laughs> but I promise you will not succeed. Um, and uh, these heat exchangers, for example, we are even using in our own machines. Oh, this yeah. is actually a part that this goes into DMG Morris. Absolutely. So uh, we have an argon gas flow in our machine and this has to be tempered and cooled. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are creating our own uh, heat exchangers for... And for I see energy. you guys do that a lot. I remember we were looking at, um, I believe it was the Laser, te Laser Tech DED. You guys were doing an additive process that was going into a drawbar. And that's for DMG Mori machines. Exactly. So not only are these things you can't do otherwise, you guys are testing the process and the final application all in your own facilities. All in one, exactly. And I'm, I'm also honest, so printing is one part. In order to reduce residual stresses, we typically have a furnace afterwards. Mm -hmm. In some applications you don't need it, but in some it's definitely a must. Then we sometimes take our work pieces on the base plate, print it on the base plate. We shift it after the, after the furnace to the machining center. We machine the, whatever, the upper side off. Mm. Yeah. Um, once the upper side is machined, we uh, cut parts off either by a simple bandsaw or wire EDM machine or anything like that. And uh, then bring it again to the machining center in order to do the finish. So you can do multi-layer printing. So once this is out of the machine for the SLM, you can actually put it back in this we call hybrid. Right. We can theoretically, and we do have certain applications that make use of it, but uh, you can only do hybrid hybrid printing if you have if your top layer is horizontal. Right. Yeah. Because only then you can print on top of the existing. Part. Makes sense. Yeah. And if you look at this part right here, I believe that's that, that is hybrid. Head. Exactly. So that here is we nuts. we have an HSK milling head. Yeah. Uh, with with uh, perfect coolant uh, supply and this is created hybrid obviously this is an open version now but uh, we do have cu several customers even uh, making use of this uh, high technology i've seen it actually out there we um, we had a podcast recently where probably one of your customers was talking about this not only is that helping get coolant where it needs to be you can actually get better grain structure you can affect you know the hardness of the actual milling head there's applications in machining and outside machining for this kind of technology. Yes, absolutely. This is sometimes those are the crazy engineers that start. Actually, all good applications start at engineering, and this right. is sometimes the challenge. A typical DMG Mori customer is a manufacturing expert. Right. He's only he knows how to machine, but not how to design. Right. And and therefore we, in our early times, we already found out that. We need a, a certain team that is uh, teaching engineers in order to make sensible redesigns mm -hmm. and analyze which are the, the, the parts that have potential for additive manufacturing. Because this is a complete design shift mentality, yes. right? For how many hundreds of years or a hundred years, we've been designing things for you know, milling machines, for lathes. You design things a certain way in that application. Here, it's completely different opening of opportunities that way. Speaking of which, I did want to touch on this because this looks a lot like the rocket nozzle we saw on the other side. Tell me a little bit about this part here. Yeah, this might be a rocket nozzle, absolutely. Um, actually, this rocket has not launched, but we have another rocket that launched lately in Norway. Um, so this is a uh, nickel base Inconel 718 uh, part. Um, it's very interesting because uh, this is full, this is a great example for full functional integration. Right. So you can imagine when the fire comes out, yeah, it heats up quite a lot. Yeah, actually the fire uh, exits oh, from there. Way. Okay. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. So um, and therefore all this part, even though it's nickel based and high temperature resistant, we, it has to be cooled. So the 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 um, the it is fed with the the 
Oh, for the coolant in this way? Actually, it's not the coolant, it's the, the gasoline, but in this case, it's not gasoline. You have to give me a... Right, it's the whatever that rocket that fuel is, hydrazine exactly. or Exactly, yeah. hydrazine maybe. So it enters from here, it cools the entire uh, part, and then here uh, is assembled uh, uh, ignition part oh. that, that uh, creates a... So it gets like a fire. dual function out of it. It's Absolutely. cooling and it's actually the propellant. Absolutely. That's super, yeah. super interesting. You said that this actually has launched a version of this yeah. in Norway. That's absolutely insane. Oh yeah, look at all the little holes in that. Yeah. I'm guessing that's for, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a rocket appliantist, but you know. And I can also tell you, you need some expertise in this field because it looks very simple if you print it. Actually, this part is being printing there. Um, but when you unpack it, it's full of powder. Even right. the channels will be full of powder. If you would place those channels into the furnace, it would sinter. So the channels are... Not going to be okay. channels anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you need to also to find strategies in order to remove uh, the material properly, to make sure that all material is, uh, is removed. And this, uh, here the designers are asked to, 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 to find good solutions. Yeah? Makes sense. Put the exit hole in the lowest point of the design and those, those things are very relevant. Again, complete design 